Welcome, folks. Um, let's get started. So, um, beautiful day here, in my opinion. Uh, perfect to spend it inside doing econ. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I think I, I recorded, due to my failure to actually record the last lecture, I recorded sort of like a ba basically similar thing uh uh and put it up on youtube so and i actually had a little bit more time to to go through the um stuff related to excel so hopefully that helps um or like google sheets excel um hopefully that helps um i think uh it's um should be good to at least get you started on on doing that analysis okay um i think today i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back and basically finish up some of the um stuff in uh, Beyond GDP, specifically regarding life expectancy. I kind of close the loop on that, okay? Um, and we'll get sort of like what I, what I would call the final product on the, the the welfare measure that incorporates basically everything that we're looking for, okay? So um, then once we do that, then, we, then you'll be basically all set uh, for, for thinking about a, a Beyond GDP type analysis um, for your mini project. Okay, so um, I would start thinking about that if you haven't already. Okay, uh, certainly you're gonna decide your side on your country relatively soon. Okay, and then you know that way you can start thinking if you're not actively working on it, at least you're kind of looking around, percolating in the back of your mind what you're gonna what you're gonna write. Okay, so um, yeah, and I think um, you know for for beyond GDP, I was thinking about some of the the stuff that you might run into in the data. So you know, the, the one limitation, the one data limitation that you may run into is that the set of countries in pen world tables is like most of them. Okay. Um, I don't know if they have your, your Tuvalu's and your Vanuatu's and all those, but, um, they might, um, but, but it has almost every country. Okay. So, uh, and then for the, uh, beyond GDP, there's that I put, it's there. So the, the, the beyond GDP data, like at the, the bottom of the website, there's a little data section, um, there is that Jones, Jones and Cleanup Beyond GDP data. That's what they did. And that's also that, well, the papers, you know, it, was, it didn't come out this year. So it's, that's um, got us, actually, that only has 1980 and 2007, and it has a smaller selection of countries. So it has, well, actually, 137 countries, which is a lot, but um, it's not as much as pen world tables. Okay. So um, there's a little bit of a data limitation there. If you want to do a, a, a smaller country, it may not be in there. Okay. So, but once we finish up stuff, the Beyond GDP stuff today, you're going to also be in a position where you could generate your own Beyond GDP data. Okay. So as long as you have um, the pen world table stuff, which gives you kind of the baseline, uh, in particular, like all the GDP, you know, log C related stuff. And then uh, the hours worked, which, will, which you can basically infer leisure from that. Okay. That's well. You have that from Pen World Tables, and then they, I put up um, this. Uh, there's some World Bank data on both the life expectancy in different countries and Gini coefficient in different countries. So you could also combine all those, okay? Um, and if you have all that, then you can basically do Beyond GDP yourself, okay? So if you want to do that, let's clean out my glasses here. If you want to do that, you can. Um, either because you just want to, you could, you know, even if you have a country that's included in the, uh, the beyond GDP data, you can do it. Uh, or if you're, if you want to, if you happen to have, be interested in a country that's not in the, um, beyond GDP, you know, they didn't get any cleaner. That's, that's, that's how it works with glasses. Um, if, if, uh, you want to do something that's not in beyond GDP, then you can, you can also do that. Okay. So if you want to avoid all of that, then just pick something that's in beyond GDP. Okay. So it's, it's really up to you. Um, Okay, so that's that's point number one, and I'll, I'll kind of circle back to that uh, at the end of the class if we have time. All right. Um, but for now, okay, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna well, I'm gonna open up the slides uh, at least. Um, let me these are the slides. So um, I'll start on the slides. I'll probably at some point get get tired tired of those and switch over to the iPad. Okay. So, um, but but last time, okay, we basically we did the the inequality stuff. Okay, so we we just to, to recap once more, you know, we, we were like sort of thinking about this notion of income distribution. Okay, I'm positing that it's a log normal, uh, that it looks log normal in a lot of cases. Okay, um, 
that gives you these heavy tails, okay? Skewed distribution, as they call it, where it's, you know, it's not symmetric, basically. It's there's heavy tails on, on the higher end, okay? Um, we work through some of this algebra, invoking various things about the log dynamic distribution that are sort of just like you, you can you can prove them. Uh, you can look them up on Wikipedia. They're out there. Okay. Um, we and we introduce this notion of the Gini coefficient. Okay, which is sort of constructed geometrically from this Lorenz curve, which gives you an idea of like how these income shares all sort of stack up. Okay. Um, and then from that, you know, we basically created that mapping. Um, you know, between I guess I have it here. So that you, you have that mapping between um, this is this is where, where I'm looking over here. This whatever this thing is, basically between the data where you can see the average income and the Gini coefficient, so C bar and G, those are two things that like we can basically see in the data. We're we're creating that mapping between um, that and these underlying theory. These these basically these things that define our distribution, right? So the mu and the sigma, right? So if if I go back to this distribution here, right? So like the mu is going to tell you like, where is this thing anchored? Where is it centered? Right? So here, the, the, like the median income for, uh, I think this is individuals, uh, is you know, 38,000. Okay. And then that sigma is just going to tell you how wide this distribution is. Okay. And it's pretty close. Sigma to zero. The distribution is just like everyone that makes 30, you know, between 38, $39,000 a year, uh, sigma gets larger than these, then you, you get a, a more realistic distribution. Um, and you can, there's no upper limit for sigma, right? So you create that mapping. Okay. And so that'll give you, um, this, you know, these mu, the mu and the sigma. Okay. Um, and then, and then basically our, our welfare, okay. Is, is, is actually just mu. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting to know sigma. Okay. But the, the welfare is, is, is actually just mu. Okay. So, um, what did I, okay. So yeah, although it's, it's, yeah, I mean, so, so if you look here, all right, so basically that welfare is the expectation of the log, which is the, it's the definition of mu. Okay. It's just this, the, the mean of the log. Okay. Um, but, but it, it, it's a little confusing because if you think about it in terms of, you know, C bar, then you also have this minus sigma term here, but it's it basically, um, mu really is the welfare. It's just to, to get at mu, you need to know sigma. If that makes sense. Okay. Because, uh, because there's a difference between the mean of the log and the log of the mean. Okay. You can't necessarily switch those two things. Okay. So that's, that's largely just a mathematical artifact, but, but the basic idea is that, you know, from the data, we can infer this distribution. Once we know the distribution, then we can think we can evaluate welfare. Okay. So, um, all right. And then I guess, yeah. So if you, if you guys are doing this yourself, okay. I mean, the, the, the most difficult thing is, um, is, you know, it's, it's, uh, let's see, think, think about this equation here. Okay. It's uh, W equals log C minus one half sigma squared. So this gives you an idea of, you know, there's the average effect and then the minus one half C one half sigma squared is the penalty for inequality, right? The, high, the, the more variance there is that you penalize that in your welfare. Okay. So we can compute the log of, of the average income. That's it. We just read the average income from the data data. Excel, you know, slash Google Sheets has a log function and so on. Um, getting sigma squared is tough because you have to, there's this sort of complex equation that relates the variance of, of log income with that Gini coefficient. Okay, so these are both the sigma, the variance of log income, and Gini, this G thing that the Gini coefficient that we constructed, they're both measures of inequality. So sigma is some number between zero and basically infinity. Gini coefficient is some number between zero, one, 0 and 1. They're both measures of inequality that are higher when there's more inequality. It's just they're different measures. That's why we need this mapping between them, okay? Because Gini is the thing that we see in the data, but sigma is the thing that we need to do to actually, we need to actually calculate welfare. So we have this mapping handed on down from high. And uh, to implement it in like um, Google Sheets or Excel, I think I actually, I should look this up. I, I'll, I'll let you guys know, but essentially that, phi function is all you need. I think that's, that's built into Excel. I'll, I can, at some, yeah, I'll, I'll look up the exact name for it. If you have that, then it's just, you type in this equation and, and you should be all set. Okay. So it's something like a normal CDF would be the name or the inverse of the normal CDF in this case. So I'll look that up and, and give that to you. So that way you guys can be fully 
equipped to do the to do the beyond gdp analysis on your if you want okay all right so that's kind of recap okay from what we had last time okay um remember all this this is kind of the 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 general details are gone over in the slides if you want to go back and reference it okay um and then we can think about this is just how to how to interpret the, the gini coefficient okay so but let's 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 move on okay so now we're um in a position where we can we can almost get everything we need so 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 far we've done we've covered you know why do we have log c that's just utility basically we've covered why do we have this uh, log l that's leisure and we just did inequality okay so the last thing basically is, is life expectancy which is going to come in through ei okay so ei is um is the life that's the life expectancy basically in the data you can you can just think about it a number of years right so in the us for instance uh, it's 76 or something it depends i mean you can look at the overall mean which i think is like 76 but don't quote me on that uh you can look at the mean conditional on uh on, on with on male and female basically and female is a little bit higher by a couple of years versus male that's basically always true um in the data um and then you can look at trends over time, right? So that's also interesting because in the US, for instance, it's been going up steadily. And, and these are in, in recent history, these aren't gigantic changes. Obviously it's great to live longer, um, you can, uh, but they're not monumental changes. Okay, so most of the changes in, in life expectancy in the US happened you know, in the early 20th century when we were uh, improving public health, right? So when you're, you're getting away from diseases like um I guess, you know, malaria cholera all of that uh yellow fever um probably uh polio stuff like that like these diseases that are basically not, not in the u.s anymore um in any meaningful sense um that was where the big changes in, in life expectancy happened okay and then after that it's more like okay making sort of incremental progress on, on cancer and, and things like that and then the incidence of heart disease um and, and so on right and so some of that's um a function of medical advances, right? Some of it's a function of behavior uh, or, or the or perhaps environmental factors, right? That are gonna influence uh, things like heart disease. Okay, so there's a lot going on, but but if you look at more recently, the, the other interesting story is that it, it was going on for a while and then it kind of either has flattened out or even decreased a little bit. Um, some of which is, you know, coming from things like the opioid epidemic and stuff like that. Okay, so, um, so that's uh that's the general trend there now in the us now the other thing to keep in mind is you know life expectancy really just is the average amount of time that you live so there's you know it doesn't um if you think about how, what does that mean well that means that think about um it basically like it treats each year equally right so if if you if you have something like infant mortality right that um had, you know, that is going to have a large effect on life expectancy because, you know, instead of living like 76 years, the person lives like, you know, less than a year, right? So obviously very sad and, but it's going to have uh, a really big effect on life expectancy because it's a huge number of years, right? And and so that's kind of thrown in the same bin as, uh, you know, changes in going from, you know, living 65 years to 75 years and stuff like that. Okay. So those are sort of, we think about those differently, but we're just sort of taking the overall average so that it's, it's aggregating all those together. It now life infant mortality is going to have a big effect, but we're just sort of throwing those all together. Okay. So, um, but you can look at other stuff. You can look at life expectancy conditional on having reached, you know, the, the age of five. And there you're looking at, you know, there's two different things going on. Uh, you know, one thing is more like infant mortality. The other thing is more like uh, these communicable diseases and, and diseases that occur in older age. Okay. So, but we're just really just looking at the average. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So then, and so I talked about what's, what the general history in the U S globally, um, as you might expect, I mean, there, there are bigger changes in recent past. Okay. Because there are countries that are actively undergoing transition from, you know, low income to middle income or middle income to high income. And there's where you do see really big, uh, changes in life expectancy. And on top of that, there are various, um, and this is all, of course, this is this is all pre-COVID stuff that I'm talking about, basically. But um, there's you know various uh, you know epidemics, probably most notably the AIDS epidemic, in um, which is largely in uh, sort of sub-Saharan Africa and and 
elsewhere. Um, I mean, having globally too. Um, and then there's also like malaria and stuff like that, tropical diseases. Okay, so that's all stuff that's like big and, and it's having really big effects. And we're going to see it's going to have big effects on utility. And it's also stuff that is changing over time. Okay, so um, that's that's the basic story. And so the uh, so life expectancy is going to have a big, not surprising, it's going to have a big impact in these countries where you do have major uh, issues with with disease. Okay, so um, all right, so that's that's sort of the the the, the sort of overview of, of what's going on in the data. Let's focus in a little bit more on how we're going to incorporate this theoretically. Okay, so um, it's not you know the the way that the thing about utility functions is that they're pretty good. I mean, it's, it's sort of clear what to do um, when you have kind of like boring stuff, like you have con consumption, you have some leisure, right? You just sort of throw it in, pop a log on there, maybe throw an ADA on. Okay, so I don't think it's that, uh, you know, you can argue about whether it should be log or something else, but but it's, it's sort of clear. Okay, and with the inequality stuff, you know, we were just sort of, using the statistical tools instead of here's a distribution we're looking at the average over that it sort of just comes out um from the math okay uh with life and death you know it's not clear what's like what's the utility of being alive what's the utility of not being alive okay um do you value the utility how do you value an incremental year of your life how do you value being old versus young like there's all this different stuff that you can think about and, and throw in okay um so there's basically there's there's a lot of different ways you could implement the idea of saying, okay, well, we want to incorporate life expectancy into the utility function. Okay, so there's a lot of degrees of freedom. So we need to pick one, okay, and we're, we're going to pick a very simple one. Okay, and we're going to pick one that also allows us to easily map from the data into an answer, uh, some, some kind of answer. Okay, so this isn't the end all and the be all, but it's 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 a pretty good first pass. Okay, so and, and what we're doing is we're saying, you know, basically, you can see this in the equation here. We have that sort of the standard stuff we have in here. We've done all this basically. We're embedding that into this sort of lifetime utility function. So all this stuff that we did so far, you could think about as your whole life, as one year, as one month, or whatever, uh, or in or countries, you know, one year in a country, and so on. So um, that's sort of like within the year, okay. And then we want to expand that to an entire life. And what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well, take that yearly thing that you know we observe this stuff yearly. And just multiply it by your life expectancy. Okay. Um, there's one additional thing, okay, which is that um, you know, uh, because be, by doing that, okay, by by adopting this framework where we just sort of add up the utility from each year and call that your whole utility, um where we're kind of making the overall level of utility important, okay. Um, and I, and it, it, it's okay. It's a little hard to explain, but I can give you a concrete example, example of why that, why this happens. Okay. So imagine we didn't, and then that's what this U bar is doing. It, it's sort of setting the overall level of utility. You can think about it as like just the, the baseline utility you get from being alive independent of everything else. Okay. So, and it's just a number. Okay. So, but imagine we didn't have U bar for a second. Okay. Um, and imagine we did all these computations. And remember that log log can be negative, right? These logs can be negative numbers. Okay, Th this thing we know is 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 always negative actually, it, because you know, the lowest that sigma can get is zero. And these logs could, in principle, be negative depending on how we measure things, right? You know, even the currency that we use could influence that, or the, whether we measure in hours or minutes, this leisure thing. So th there's a there's sort of an indeterminacy there. And imagine it was negative or that the, the, this whole term here was negative, okay, that would mean that you actually value being alive negatively, that if you increase EI by one, your utility goes down, which seems wrong, right? We would at least hope that increasing EI increases your utility. So the U, the U is a little bit of a hack, but what it's what it's supposed to do is just make it so, make it so that your baseline utility of being alive is, is positive, okay? Now, it's not always going to succeed, okay? Um, because you can make CI as low as you want. Hopefully you don't, but you could. Okay, you, you CI, there's no lower bound on CI except for zero, okay? And so this log here could be arbitrarily, you know, as, as C goes to zero, the log of C is gonna go to minus infinity, okay? So there's still no lower bound on that term. And the same thing applies here. If you had, as, as your leisure time goes to zero, that term goes to minus infinity. So 
no matter what we set for you, if your life kind of sucks enough or you have low enough consumption or leisure, your utility is still going to be negative. Okay, so there we get into sort of kind of some medieval stuff or sort of like, you know, a philosophical question of, of can the value of life be negative? I mean, we're going to set you so that like for a reasonable standard of living that almost everyone in the world enjoys, the value of life is going to be positive. So we don't really have to ponder these sort of um, these things. Okay, so uh, you is going to be kind of at, a, a, at such a value that um, that uh, you're that that increasing EI will increase your overall lifetime utility. Okay. Um, now, then there's the question of, okay, well, how, like, we can't just assert, okay, U is five. Okay. It's not even clear what that means. Okay. So uh, we, we do want to have some way of, of at least inferring loosely U from the data. Okay. So um, yeah, so here, uh, this is difficult as you might expect, okay? But um, there's some ways you can do it, okay? And, and it gets back to that notion that if you want to figure out parameters of the utility function, you look at the choices that people make, okay? And in particular, in this case, we're going to be looking at people making life and death choices, okay? Um, and so so one thing you can do is, is uh, and this is kind of, I think this is how they do it in the paper, is uh, look at people making, uh, uh, choosing basically to, uh, work in dangerous professions, okay? So um, I know there was a paper looking at Iraqi tr uh, truck drivers. That's like a, a dangerous profession, especially like you know, anytime probably, but post-war certainly. Um, and uh, you, or you can look at things like, you know, being a coal miner or stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of dangerous professions out there. And and the, the basic idea is that there, there's this notion of a compensating differential, that if there's a dangerous, if there's a profession out there that's, Similar to others, it just happens that you have like a 1% chance of dying. You'd expect there to be some wage premium associated with that, right? You got a choice between being a coal miner and, you know, maybe you're a truck driver. Or, well, that's also dangerous, but like maybe you're, um, you're working at a restaurant or something like that. And, you know, maybe you think about those as similar, except it's just the coal miner is just much more dangerous. Okay. So you'd expect if you had a choice between those, um, there would be some wage premium that to draw people that make people willing to actually be a coal miner okay so um or or a truck driver or something like that okay so um so that's the idea is that you can look try and kind of figure out okay take kind of two jobs that look otherwise comparable but one is a little is, is more dangerous so look at that wage premium and sort of infer the this this value of people's lives because you know they're they're basically doing this cal you can think about it this is what am i doing here okay there we go um you can think about this calculation as um you know what it what is the uh the calculation well you, you have some probability in that job of dying okay you have some sort of value let's just call it you borrow that's this is the term but you just have some sort of value for each year of life okay and then you might think that that's sort of on the same order of magnitude as the wage differential okay so they're kind of you know I'm saying equals, maybe they're not exactly equal, but you would, you would think that the, the wage premium is on the same order of magnitude as the probability, unfortunately, that, that you, you die or are injured or something, times the, uh, the the value that you place on, on life, okay? Which is U-bar. So then if you go out, you and this is beyond the scope of, of, of like what we would do. I mean, we're just, um, the, but there are other papers that do things like this. Uh, you go out and look at these wage differentials, look at the actual probabilities of, of dying in these in these risky occupations, um, and then just sort of you know back out U bar. So you know, U bar is basically equal to delta W over D. Okay, um, you know if we were doing it a hundred percent in line with, um, sorry, I screwed that up. If we're doing a hundred percent in line with what we're doing here. I mean, you, you'd want to say um, you'd want to do kind of something like we did with lambda. Okay, so because we have this log C up here, right? So you'd want to say something like, um, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, you know, you, you, your option A, your utility is going to be, uh, let's see, well, it'll, it'll just be like log of C. Okay, that's like the safe option. Okay. And then this is the dangerous option. 
option B. Okay, your utility would be something like um, log of C, uh, sorry, log of C plus that wage differential, you know, minus the probability of death times U bar. Okay, so you have safe option, you just get consumption. The dangerous option is, well, you get a little bit more consumption, and then uh, you, you have this, you penalize though for, for the, the probability of death, right? And so here, what you would do is you sort of say, well, these two should be about equal, okay? You go out, you get data on the wage differential delta W, get data on D, that how dangerous the occupation is. And again, you can back out this U, U bar number if, if you know their income level C2, okay? So you could, that's a little bit more complicated, but it's the same basic idea is that you're just trading off consumption with, with uh, risk, okay? And you can, from these choices, assuming people have a free choice between this, the safe and the dangerous option, then you might think that you can back out U bar by saying that these two should be about approximately equal. Okay, so so basically any time, um, you know, if they weren't equal, then people would choose always choose one or the other. And so if there's people choosing either or, then the, the utilities should be roughly on par with each other. That's that's a sort of a, the intuition there. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so, so regardless of whether we do it sort of the simple linear way or we actually throw in, in our specific utility function, there's a way to, to back out U bar from people's choices when they're making basically these choices that involve the, the unfortunate probability of, of death, right? So that's how, how they approach it in, in Jones. Um, and and so, yeah, so, you, so you, they get some U bar number. I think what, I, forget, I don't quote me on this again, but I think, I don't they get U bar equals five. So the, I don't know. But what does that mean? It turns out that well, it's it's not one hundred percent clear what it always means because, um, you know, if, if we go back to this utility function again, it, the what what you numerically have for U bar depends on how you measure this other stuff, right? So, if, you know, if you measure things in U.S. dollars in twenty twenty, for instance, you know, you'll get some numbers here and you'll have some U bar, but if you measure them in um, I don't know, euros in 2010, uh, turning on euros, then you, you, you'd have to have some other U-bar. Okay, so the, the units on U-bar are not entirely clear, but as long as you're consistent about what your units you're using, and then you for U-bar using those units, then you'll you'll be good, all right? So you just have to be careful that the, the units kind of do matter here um, in some sense, all right? Um, okay, so that's, okay, so that, you know, you, getting U bar is complicated. It's doable. All right, and we can use the same basic intuition that we use to get to get ADA, for instance, is that you look at people's choices. Okay, um, but once we have that, then it's pretty much it, right? Then we have everything that we need. We can infer, or we can see in the data C, L, sigma, um, and E. We're kind of inferring ADA and U bar as universal parameters uh, of of the human experience or something. Okay, so. Um, and with the caveats that I gave before about that example with France is, you know, maybe they do differ a little bit. Okay. I don't know. You know, I don't know why U bar would differ necessarily, but maybe they do. Uh, maybe ADA differs. Okay. So, um, but, but I think you know, at this point it's, it's fairly, uh, well, it's, it's easier to just use a common value for those. Okay. So, so now we, we basically have everything. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have everything, don't we? Yeah, and then the, the, the last thing I'll say is, is remember, CI is consumption, okay? So CI is not output, okay? So when I was, when, when a lot of what we're doing, what I showed you on the Penwell tables last time, I was looking at, you know, um, our, you know it's our GDP and I basically GDP output, okay? Um, just remember, we're looking at consumption, okay? So out, you know, consumption is, is output net of, investment uh i mean depending on all the other things you're including in gdp but basically it's consumption but netting out investment so you're just looking at what people are consuming okay so um and that but but it's just it's an it's another column in the federal tables there's there's a, co a column that's specifically consumption so you don't even have to calculate it um okay so that yeah so that now with that we can we can basically do everything we need um and so from here i think i had this in the slides right so from here then all we have to do is, so we, we sort of converged on the final form of your utility function that includes everything we want, okay? Um, 
So the, the last thing we need to do is just go back and, and redo that Lambda stuff. So if you remember, when we just had log C, we calculated Lambda and it ended up just being the ratio of consumption. This, this, um, this, this Lambda that measures the different uh, welfare level, levels between countries. Then we added in leisure, right? Oop, I got chat, sorry. Uh, okay, only two minutes ago. All right, so um, Mark Sanson, uh, is utility always measured in money? Yeah, well, so yeah, that's utility is, it's, it's, it's got no units, okay? Um, it's just, and, and the reason it has no units is, is kind of like I said last time, is it, it's not clear, you can't really necessarily compare utility across, uh, you know, the, the classical conception of utility is it tells you how to, as one person, order different outcomes, okay? So, so like, in the most abstract possible sense, you know, you can think of a person's preferences. It's just you have a bunch of outcomes, and I tell you, like, I prefer A to B, B to C, I prefer E to A, and so on. Okay, you could even have it so that you have loops, right? You have cycles and you don't even know what's your most preferred outcome, although that's getting a little bit into more exotic stuff, but th that's the, the most general sense. And then when you have a utility function, you're just kind of assigning numbers to all those outcomes and saying, well, if the number is higher, then I prefer that thing. And if it's not higher, then I don't. And that makes that also prevents cycles. That means that you have to have like a well-defined ranking over all these different options, okay? Um, now, because we're compare, we're doing this utilitarian thing, so we're kind of adding up people's utility, we're comparing across countries, we are actually kind of saying that utility is comparable. Um, and, and the reason we do this lambda construction is to give you sort of like a, a, a number that's sort of centered around one that, that kind of gives you an index of, of, that summarizes sort of the differences in utility, okay? Um, and uh, in, in a way that, kind of add some interpretation to it. Okay, so, but but in terms of, you know, I was saying like how you, the the numerical value that you have for U bar is gonna depend on how you denominate consumption and, and this other stuff. So there it's just like, um, let me, uh, it, it, it's basically like, uh, you know, when I was doing this this thing here on the right, okay, with these two options, um, you, 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 you kind of, you need to know, think about what you need to know about a person to do this, to observe this, you need to know their consumption, their baseline consumption, like their baseline income. You need to know. Um, well, that's it, actually. But that, and then you need to observe this wage differential and the sort of how dangerous that job is, so the probability of death. So you kind of those are the things you're observing, and then from that you back out U bar. Okay. But then the question is, how do you measure C? So if you measure C in 2020 U.S. dollars, you get you know maybe you'll get U bar equals five or something like that. Uh, but if you measure C in euros, then maybe you'll get U of I equals seven, right? So you, and then you just have to be consistent across all your calculations. Okay, so that, that's that's what I mean when I when the so the the money denomination matters. But once you go into utility land, it's just it's just a number. There's no units at all. Okay, which is yeah. I mean, usually scientists really want to have units on everything, but there's just no. We just don't have units to give it. Sometimes we say utils, but that's not really. It's just like a made up thing, right? So. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's what I'd say uh, about that. Okay. Um, all right. So, okay. So then let's, let's think about this, um, pop back to the slides. Think about this Lambda, right? Um, so, so what we're doing is, um, the same thing you said. So we, 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 we did Lambda with just consumption. We did Lambda with consumption and leisure. Uh, I guess we didn't do adding inequality, but we'll, we could we could have done it then, okay, and it would have looked similar. Um, and then, but now we're going to do lambda with all four things, okay. Um, and so, uh, and and I'm I'm going to write it as log lambda because then you get these additively separable terms, okay. So when we did, uh, and so in, in log world, so the you know when we just did consumption, we basically got log of lambda was this differential here. That the log of lambda was the the log. C, CI, which is the country we're interested in, minus the log of CUS. Okay, so here I'm doing what I, US is the base country, right? So I'm going to use US as the base country, and then I is like France or China or Japan or whatever. That's the country we're, we're interested in, okay? So the, by definition, lambda of US is going to be one, 
right? Because when you plug in US here, you know, this term becomes zero. When you plug in US here, this becomes zero, zero, it's, and so on, zero. So you'll get a log of lambda equals zero, which means that lambda itself is one. So the US is sort of the baseline. It's, if lambda is automatically equal to one, and then we're measuring countries as differentials from that, okay? Um, where in higher lambda means higher welfare, okay? But it's the same um, notion that we had before. Okay, so let me, I didn't write it in the slides, but it's this, this, you know, this compensating variation. Compensating variation. My handwriting is not good. All right, so that, and so that's going to be the way we would write it here would be, um, let me show you this right. Actually, how do we, sorry, I'm going to cheat. And just check. I just need to make sure that I'm defining it the same way I defined it in the beginning. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so the way we're going to define it, define it is like this is we're going to have some Lambda I, okay. That we're multiplying on CUS. Okay. And then we, we throw in all these. So we US and the US. Okay. So the, this is, um, so remember we have four things here. We have consumption, leisure, uh, sigma, which is inequality. Okay. And uh, life expectancy. Okay. So the left-hand side is the utility for the US, but with uh, some lambda multiplier. So if lambda was one, it would just be the utility of the US. And then the right-hand side is... Um, the utility of the other country. So that's going to be, you know, CI, LI, Sigma I, uh, and EI. Okay. Remember the, and I just, you know, the, the actual definition of this utility function <clears throat> is this, I'll read it. Okay. Is, um, you know, it's just what we had on that slide before. Okay. But I'll write it out here. So we have it handy. Log of li minus one half sigma sigma i squared. Okay, so that's our that's the utility function that we had in the slides. Okay, that incorporates all these things. So the way we're defining lambda i here is the is as you know the lambda that will make these two utilities equal. So we take the we take on the right hand side we have the utility for country i from you know we're given those four data points. Uh, on the left hand side we have the utility for the U.S. We also are we're shifting their consumption up and down, okay. Um, and so if if, um, if the utilities of the two countries were indeed the same, okay. Uh, make sure I get this right. Yeah, the, if the utilities were indeed the same, with you know without the lambda, then that means lambda equals one, okay. <clears throat> that the lambda that satisfies that equation is setting lambda equal to one. If the utility of that other country is higher, well, then we need to we need to boost up the U.S. consumption until those two utilities are equal. So lambda would be greater than one. If the utility was lower, we need to bring down the U.S. consumption to equate these two utilities, right? So, so for any country, we just think about think about sort of just varying these lambda, this lambda, until that equality holds, and that's going to tell you the lambda value itself. Okay, so that's that's. In general, and this, this is how we define the compensating variation. Okay, um, and then what we're doing is, you know, you plug in this utility function on both sides. It's going to give you a bunch of factors and logs and everything. And in particular, on the left, you're going to have a log of lambda, and just solve for that lambda. Okay. And what you get when you do that is is exactly what we have on the slide here, right? So you're going to get log of lambda as a function of a bunch of these differentials. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I could go through and plug it in. It's just, it's a real chore and it's just, it's, it's a lot of writing. Um, but you, know, you just plug, you know, plug in this utility function on each side where we had plug in this utility, you know, this utility function here on this side, on that side, and just sort of set, you know, subtract a bunch of stuff. So you have lambda on the left and a, bu and a bunch of things on the right. Group those things on the right by, you know, the, whether it's consumption related, leisure related, inequality, and so on. And this is what you're going to get. Okay. So you're going to get this. All right. Now, 
And so here we can see, you know, we have the what we had originally, the consumption differential, I minus the US. Next line, leisure differential, I minus the US. Next line, uh, inequality differential, I minus the US. Okay, so it's all differentials from the US and they're getting added together, okay? Now, this, this one is a little bit trickier, okay? Um, if you go through the algebra, this is, this is, you know, this is what you get, okay? And, and, to, and this is where you run into a little bit of a weird implication of the way we define compensating differential, which is that, um, so, so look at this first term. But this is your life expectancy term. This is the new thing that we're getting from life expectancy. Okay, so you um, basically the idea is you, you can't just look at like EI minus EUS and just say that that's your term because the value of each year of life is, you know, U bar plus log C plus log L, eta log L minus half sigma squared. Okay, but then the question becomes, which value do you use? Do you, do you use the US value or do you use the other country's value? And then multiply that by the life expectancy differential. It's not obvious, okay? Um, the, if, if we if we just purely blindly follow the algebra, though, this what you get is this, and what you can see is that you're using the other country value and multiplying by like the the proportional difference in life expectancy, right? So this is EI minus the US over ES. So it's like if if it's like um, you know the US life expectancy was fifty and the other country was sixty, this would be like 0 0.2, so twenty percent higher life expectancy. Okay, so you have that percentage difference in life expectancy times the value of life in, you know, that other country that you're considering. Okay. Um, which, okay, so, but the problem potentially with this is, in it is a kind of how you interpret it. Well, it's basically saying that like a 20% difference in life expectancy is valued differently in different countries. And in particular, it's valued less in poorer countries, right? Because poorer countries, in general, are going to have lower overall utility as well because they have lower income. They they often work more and they often have higher inequality. So their overall term here inside the brackets is also going to be lower. And so you're effectively valuing their life expectancy less because they're a poorer country. Seems not great, right? So um, it's just mathematically how it comes out. You don't have to do that, right? Um, you can think, okay, well maybe if we define lambda slightly differently. We'll get a different implication, right? And in fact, that is true. Okay, so um, remember when it, what I, what I wrote on the slides was, and I guess this. Let me let me just go to the the iPad so I can give you the side by side. So this is like option one, which is what we've sort of been doing so far, where we put the lambda on the U.S. and we modulate the U.S. consumption values to to ensure utility equality. Option two is to instead modulate the consumption of the other country. Okay, so we're gonna say, you just keep the US side totally plain, where we use the US numbers and put it in our utility function. And then what we're doing over here is we're gonna have CI, but we're gonna divide by some lambda and I'll put a little hat on it so we know it's a different construct. Okay, and then put in all these numbers, okay? All right, so then the question we might ask, well, why did I divide by lambda rather than multiply by lambda? Well, this way, we still get that same thing that if, if the country has higher utility, then lambda is going to be greater than one, right? So think about country B has higher, this I country has higher utility. If we want to make these two things than the U.S., if we want to make these two things equal, we have to actually penalize them down to the U.S. level to make them equal. So if they have higher utility, that lambda is still going to be greater than one, just like before but it's a slightly, algebraically, it's slightly different, okay? And if they have lower utility, we're gonna to have to boost it up, which means making lambda less than one and dividing by that number means less than one, meaning it goes up. Um, and, and, and we still have that if the two countries have equal utility, then lambda should be one, okay? So it, it's good because it's still sort of an increasing metric of welfare, but it's, it's gonna give us a slightly different answer. And in fact, I'm gonna hop back to the slides. Um, it'll give us something that looks almost exactly like this whole thing here. These terms will be the same, except here we're going to have US instead of I. So we're going to take the value, sort of the average value of a year of life that you use to measure, um, that you use to, to weight uh, 
differences in life expectancy and you make that the US value rather than like different values for different countries, which seems a little bit more fair that you just have a common value. Even if it's the US value, you have a common value for, for a year of life and then you evaluate these differences. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's that's the basic idea. There's, there's two, you know, um, there, there's always different ways to construct these metrics. There's no one true way um, and, and different ways to do it have different implications and sometimes those implications are not desirable and so maybe you, that's why you kind of try try around different things okay so i mean um i think in in the paper that uh, this jones and cleanout paper that i've been basing this off of they they kind of use the first way as a baseline but they also look at the second way because of this exact problem which they which they picked up on it and noted in the paper right so um and they often give you similar answers okay but the, but it it is something to be aware of Okay. Um, all right. So that's sort of what you can do. And then I guess we, we can look at, um, what am I doing here? So, so let's look at some data. Okay. So, uh, I guess you, I mean, we can probably maybe next time I'll look at, uh, we can look at like different graphs and everything, but we can just look at so, some raw numbers here. So basically, um, the, the, in the paper, you also you can see they have a bunch of tables, uh, but but basically the way that they do it is um, okay. So you you have they're, they're basically kind of implementing this equation in numerical form. Okay, so if you compare two different countries, you have the overall lambda number. The lambda is just like the summary. I want to know just I don't care about the details. Just tell me what what's the number? What's the welfare differential? Okay, and that's sort of the headline number. Okay, but then you can basically break it down by the contribution of each of these different terms. Okay, so like how much of that, you know, so you see a country, I guess I should just look at the numbers. Uh, you see a country and and you, you can, their lambda here, okay, so uh, this is percentages, okay? So, so if you calculate lambda is 0.91, as in the case for France, you know, it's 91%, okay? So that's, this welfare here is just lambda. Okay, this is the overall number. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then and then what they do after that is it give you the breakdown from these different sources. Okay, and it's there's one additional thing. Okay, which like doesn't show up in that previous equation, but kind of effectively is is incorporated. The way that they do it is they start with um, total income. Okay, so you can, you can think about total income as sort of like the baseline. And then you build up to lambda by adding in these different factors. Okay, so total income is like it's GDP. Okay, this is this is your GDP number, and then they build they add they build up from GDP to welfare. Okay, so maybe the order is a little off here, but basically, if you take income, and you add on these different numbers, you should end up with welfare, roughly. Okay, um, so like. Uh, that okay it's it, you don't add them up literally you have you kind of have to multiply them in a weird way like you multiply one plus but basically the, the combined effect of these will get you from income to welfare suffice to say okay and so but the the only the reason why i'm saying is there's one additional difference is that in that equation before we had consumption right um here we're saying we have income okay and then you consume some fraction of that income and that's what the C over Y is. Okay, so you, you you have income of you know a hundred. Okay, if you only consume eighty percent of that, okay, then this will give you like a minus twenty percent here, right? Because going from income to consumption, you're you're you're, you're sort of not consuming twenty percent, and you you maybe you're investing it or whatever. Okay, um, and so that's that's the one additional thing. But then the other factors are you know leisure, inequality, and we saw and life expectancy. Okay, so the, those are, are going to show up there. Okay, and and then from here you can basically see, you know, kind of I, I I'm just I just did a cross section here of countries, roughly one per continent. Okay, uh, except I guess we have three in China too. Um, and then you can you can look at you know what what factors are generally more important and what factors are more important for particular countries. Okay, so I guess um, I mean you can see there first of all there are big differences in this consumption well first of all there are big differences in income 
in, in GDP. We, we kind of know that, right? Uh, so going from USA as the baseline is just by definition, a hundred percent France, either, you know, their GDP number is about, um, is okay. Is 70% that of the U S okay. It's not a 70% penalty is a 70% that of the U S okay. I think, and this is in 2007. So remember we, we were looking at graphs before, I think the number at the end was more like 80 or something like that. So, so, so there's probably, there's been some evolution here in the intervening almost 15 years. Okay. But, um, it is still lower than the U S okay. And then you can, and then you can see these additional factors. So life expectancy gives you sort of an 18% boost Go, France relative to the U S okay. So the same French, French people live some not insignificant amount of time longer than, than people in the U S. Okay. I think, well, that doesn't mean they live 18% longer, but I think they, I, I don't remember what the number is, but I expect that they live five to percent, five to 10% longer than people in the U S. Okay. Um, then there's this, you know, what fraction of output are you consuming? Okay. So this means, this means that French people are the French economy as a, in, in aggregate, uh, is consuming a smaller fraction of their income, right? So they, they're starting at a lower income level. They're also consuming a smaller fraction. Okay. Now it doesn't mean they're throwing the, the rest away. I mean, they're investing it. So maybe this will lead to higher welfare or, or at least, uh, income in the future. Okay. That's, that's the hope I think. Um, leisure actually, you know, I tell that story about French, French people have different leisure or working hours. It turns out, I guess it's not that much of a difference. One percent. Okay. So they're practically identical in the U S. Um, I think they have better, I don't know how it pans out. They have better vacation policies, better from the perspective of workers, at least. Um, but better, maybe they work a little bit more the rest of the time. Okay. Uh, and then inequality. This is a positive number. I mean, these are all welfare differentials. So this means their inequality is lower, which results in a 14% boost in the welfare number. Okay. So you kind of multiply all these proportionate terms together, and that'll give you a 21% boost from income baseline to um, the welfare number, which is 91%. So this is saying French people have only 9% lower welfare than people in the US. The interpretation of that, the, the sort of plain English statement is that if you gave some, our hypothetical person with their utility function, the choice between living in France and living in the US, but with 91% of the, their, the average income of a person in the U S they would be indifferent. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you buy that, I, uh, but that's what it says. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and then we can do Kenya or that Kenya, Korea. Uh, so, so they have their baseline income, you know, is 58, 58% that of the U S life expectancy is also higher there. They're consuming they're, and they're investing a lot more consuming a lot less at this stage. Uh, leisure, big, well, relatively large, uh, penalty basically means that they work more. Um, and then higher, uh, lower inequality, which means uh, higher welfare metric, uh, differential there. Okay. So that gets you from, well, actually, okay. That brings you from 58 down to 45 more or less because of this, this consumption fraction. Okay. So sometimes it's interesting to only look at basically life expectancy, leisure and inequality, just to say what, what's the, like, assume that they're investing stuff for a reason, like that they expect that to pay off in the future. They're not just throwing it away. It is interesting just to think about the sum of like life expectancy, leisure and inequality. Okay. Cause you can see, you know, for Korea, that's sort of weekly positive. Maybe it's about six, 4%, you know, for France, it's a 33%. Okay. So, so those, those sort of non, non, uh, pecuniary, which, which basically means like sort of non-monetary differences are, you know, they're quite positive for France. Okay. They're sort of weekly positive for Korea. Okay. And then they, they're becoming more negative as we go, we go on. Okay. Um, so then you can do for <clears throat> Argentina, you know, so we're the, the base income I've, I've ordered these by their base income. So you can see these countries were already at 20, 26% for Argentina, worse life expectancy, a little bit better in the, a little bit better in the leisure, basically the same on inequality. Okay. So, and then as you go down, you know, China, this, this number is probably also 
quite a bit lower than it is right now because China's been seeing a lot of growth relative to the U.S. Um, and since 2007. So, but you know, for for this table at least, um, you've got seven uh, percent or say fifty percent income, uh, lower life expectancy, much more savings, less consumption, you know, less leisure, more inequality. Okay, and finally for Kenya, you have a much lower income, life expectancy getting basically it really really hard on life expectancy. Okay. Um, and then, uh, a little bit more consumption, a little bit better, in, a little bit like better in leisure and also similar to China getting kind of penalized for, um, that inequality. Okay. So you can see for these different countries, how it all sort of pans out in 2007. Okay. And then you can see like the, the reason I was saying you don't just add these up is like, you know, Kenya, they started out with 3% on the income scale, but it's like, it's not like you, you're not going to get like a negative welfare. The welfare is at minimum zero. Okay, so you, you're really doing like a 39% off of three. So that's why you only get down to 2%. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, but, but in, in whatever case we're saying, you know, the, the, the plain English interpretation is like, you're indifferent between that living in that country and living in the US with, you know, X percentage of that income. Okay, of the X percentage of the average US income. So in the case of Argentina, it's 22% and so on. So it's interesting to consider if you were given the option and maybe let's say, assume you had like a reasonable job and you spoke the language, this, this hypothetical uh, option, okay. Or this hypothetical choice. Um, okay. And then the, the, the final thing you can do is uh, instead of looking at the, the levels, you can look at the growth rates. Okay. So you can say, okay, well, that's cool that it was that in 2007, but like how have things been evolving over time? Okay, and what, what we do here is uh, we're looking at annualized growth rates. So this isn't the change from 1980 to 2007. It's like the change in 1980 to 2007 annualized, which means we're sort of dividing in some sense by 27, roughly speaking. Okay, so we're taking the growth rate, you divide it by 27. So it's like we're growing that much each year. Okay, so you can see, you know, I mean, these, you know, just as a baseline, these income numbers, first of all, this tells this. This is, we would expect this to tell a different story because, you know, the countries, many of the countries, not all of them, but many of the countries with the lower incomes are the very countries that have higher growth rates because there is some measure of convergence happening, right? Um, and so, you know, if you look at these income numbers, these are just your GDP, annualized GDP growth numbers, okay? So we can get a, a general sense of how fast are these countries growing, um, okay? And you can see the U.S., pretty much for, for most periods, just kind of hovers around 2% almost all the time. Okay, at least in, in the modern era. Okay, France, a little bit lower. Um, Korea, got it. so this is, you know, this is going back to 1980. So those are some of the years that Korea was just having spectacular growth. So that's, you know, 6.4%. Um, Argentina doing doing pretty well. China, you know, not surprisingly over this period, very high uh, growth rates. Okay, and then Kenya has about minus 1%. So it's the, not disastrous but not great okay we're, we're slowly shrinking actually so um and then we can look at these these differentials okay um and so well here you see a bit more you can see that life expectancy is is quite important for for a lot of these countries okay so especially for even for france actually and and, and korea um you know some pretty big annualized gains in life expectancy. Um, in Kenya and Argentina, you can see they're kind of slipping and the China is, is doing uh, pretty pretty well and the US is doing okay too. Um, these other ones, they don't change that much. Okay, so here you can really see how important this life expectancy number is. Um, but you can also see that, you know, at the end of the day, GDP is still the most important thing in this in this equation. Okay, these are the biggest numbers. Okay, so that's important not to forget, even though it's interesting to look at all this not GDP stuff, GDP is still quite important, okay? Um, and so when, when you add all those in, I mean, um, well, so so you don't see, you know, the question is, if you just if you just looked at income and you kind of looked at the ordering, is it different from the ordering once you add in all this other stuff and you get this full, full welfare metric? I would say, I mean, there is, uh, one flip, I mean, so so in terms of income, the U.S. has been doing 2.1 versus France's 1.6, whereas once you include all of these other things, 
and, and life expectancy is probably the most important factor there. France is, is growing a bit faster than the US at 3.3 versus 3.1. Okay, so you can see, you know, it's sort of a, I would have thought, honestly, that France had sort of maxed out its life expectancy gains, uh, but actually they, they keep going. Okay, and some of that probably is, you know, there's these overall technological improvements. We know how to treat different diseases, but the US, you know, we, you know heart disease, uh, diabetes, and things like that. Um, that, uh, that, you know, those are big problems in the US and, and to some extent the, the opioid ep epidemic and things like that. So probably that's part of the story and why the US, you know, this number here is lower for the US relative to France, okay? Um, and it, with, with, you know, with Korea and China, it's, you know, you can kind of, you know, it doesn't really change the overall picture there. They, they've been just having very high birth rates over this period, um, similar for Argentina, in some of our opinion, it doesn't really change what we would say just looking at GDP in and of itself. Okay. Um, all right. So, so yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I got here for um, uh, for for the beyond GDP stuff. I guess um, just real quick, uh, go back to the home page here. So. You know, it, but in and in terms of you know sort of doing the stuff on your own, you know, if, if you want to do it, if you if you're using sort of Google Sheets or Excel, I mean, you can you can use the same basic approach. You know, import whatever pen world tables or import the Beyond GDP XLS uh, or this. If you if you want to go down that road, basically this uh, Gini coefficient or the life expectancy inf information. Okay, um, import those and sort of you know copy in whatever country you're you're in particular that you're looking at. Um, and then you can just do these calculations that I'll, I'll maybe in the, in the, um, in this HTML, I guess I'll put the, uh, the function name in Excel that will help you do that gene, that very particular genie, uh, to Sigma calculation. Okay. Or maybe I'll just give you the whole form, the whole equation. Okay. In, in an Excel style, uh, format. And so that, that way you can, you can do that. And that other stuff should just be sort of relatively simple algebraic, uh, uh computations. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, I'll end in, I guess I'll just end, I'll end a minute early. I think that that's a good point to, to stop at. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I do have, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be back in five minutes for office hours. Okay. Um, but otherwise I'll see you, I'll see you all on a Thursday. All right. Thank you.